Scotland is carved by major faults, the Southern Uplands Fault, the Highland Boundary Fault, the Moyne Thrust, and most prominent of all, the Great Glen Fault, carving through the landscape, separating the Northern Highlands from the Grampian Highlands. A major furrow that runs from Loch Linney in the southwest up to the Moray Firth here in the northeast part of the map. Well, for the most part, the rocks in the Great Glen Fault Zone have been carved out by many glaciations, leaving the furrow of the Great Glen itself. But up here, on the edge of the Moray Firth, we can find evidence for the shattering processes that happen during faulting. Well, let's zoom in. And here comes the Great Glen Fault, running out to form the northwest margin of the Moray Firth. Now, it bounds and forms the coastline to this part of the Black Isle between the Bewley Firth and the Cromarty Firth. And most of this ground is Devonian aged old red sandstone. You can tell what the rocks are here, even when they're not very well exposed, because it's used as building stone to make these characteristic stone houses. But poking out from beneath the old red sandstone here are two patches of older basement rocks, which otherwise lie out here. And these are the Moyne and Louisian substrate to the old red sandstone basin. And it's here that we can go and find evidence for the Great Glen Fault, near the village of Rosemarkey. We've come to look for fracture damage caused by the Great Glen Fault to the upper crust. But the rocks we see are all Louisian once deeply buried in the crust. And we don't have to go far along the coast to find our first outcrops. So this is an outcrop of Louisian pegmatite, highly fractured. It's like a shattered car windscreen. Well, this lump of shattered rock is the shape of things to come. Let's continue up the beach and try and make sense of these types of broken rocks. But let's start by finding rocks that are less shattered. So these are pretty nice Louisianoid rocks. We've got these pegmatitic materials here and the main black amphibolite with these sheared felspathic layers forming this really nice banding. So fairly classic Louisian type material here as an inlier within the Moyne. So well banded mafic and these sort of sheared pink zones in here. Well, these are former Louisian rocks, an inlier within the Moyne, right up against the Great Glen Fall. So, amphibolites and felspar-rich pegmatites. How do these different rock types pick up fracture damage? These are amphibolites, these nice dark layers, but the fracture density in this is far less than we've just seen in that felspar-rich sheared pegmatite. So these units are fracturing differently depending on their composition. 
let's see what else there is along this rocky shoreline. Well, there are surprisingly few forts within this section, but here's one. And you can see it's rather interesting form. There's little lozenges of these philspathic layers are ripped out and elongate within the fault zone. Lenses of shattered material. So quite complicated fault geometries in detail when you look up close. Check around in the down drops. There's some pretty nice ductile fabrics that are deep in the crust. Uh, the shearing of the Louisian, presumably with its once more in cover. So we can take these high temperature ductile fabrics in the amphibolite, track them into this fault zone where the rock is shattered into a breccia and uh, even a fine gouge zone. So this is a subsidiary fault to the Great Glen. So along the coastline, some of these subsidiary faults have been eroded out and they make these spectacular smugglers caves. So it's not only the coastline itself that's controlled by the Great Glen Fault, but also the form of the coastline along here. And the Great Glen Fault bounds the basin of the Inner Moray Firth. So the Great Glen Fault isn't a discrete, narrow fault zone. There's a halo of deformation around that fault, fracture damage, and it's heterogeneous. So that's the Rosemarkey Inlier, a slice of Louisian basement caught up along the Great Glen Fault, and we can use it to get an insight into how fracture damage occurs associated with that major strike slip.